have a lot of co-authors uh, because we do a project that's quite big and one of the uh, two of the co-authors are here, uh, Van Huang and uh, Michiel Jansen. And I give the floor some minutes to Michiel as well to show what we do. It's called Biomimicking the Brain. And we have a big application, I want to start with that, and that is uh, the detection of diabetes. We have been asked from China to help because it is in China exploding. They have such a quick change in lifestyle and they have a genetic uh, yeah, preference for it, there's the predisposition that 10% of China has diabetes at this moment. That means 100 million people. And many people don't know. And it's a big, big risk in healthcare and it is so many costs are involved that they say, well, we should do early detection of it. And it is the major source of blindness. And if you're blind, you go out of society, you don't earn money anymore, it is a big problem. <coughs> and vessels start to leak. That's the main issue. You cannot put everyone in an MRI, but where can you see vessels? Uh, new vessels are coming, uh, you see changes in vessels, but the retina gives an excellent view on vessels. So what we are doing is actually making images from the retina, pretty high resolution. You put a camera in front of your eye, and it just costs no money, no time. In a second, you have 20 megapixels, and with an extreme detail, you can see all the blood vessels. But we're going to make 24 million images of this. We're going to scan a whole province of China. And if it's working, we go to much further. And we have already great interest from other countries, from India, from Brazil. So we have to detect lots of these things from these uh, images, and we do that with uh, what's called a fundus camera. Um, we do all these fast analysis, and secondly, because we have the method turn out to be quite powerful, and I talk about it in about a minute, we also start now doing uh, intrinsic vessel analysis in 3D, uh, because heart infarct is such a big problem, and there we use MRI scans. So we're gonna talk about vessel analysis in 2D and 3D. We have a big collaboration set up with the Netherlands between four partners, the University of Eindhoven and Northeastern University, and I care, and they have 11 hospitals, 400 rural centers, and they are quite big, and we have a Dutch manufacturer. We even have buses now, four buses that go to the rural areas to acquire all these uh, images, so it's uh, quite a nice project. And Mathematica is used for, analyzes the images, and we need to design algorithms to do proper vessel analysis. Well, I do already for several years brain-inspired computing, so it's the best image processing machine we know. A quarter of our brain is for vision, and that means there's an enormous processing power there, and we will see why. And today we have an enormous insight in what the brain is doing. We have optical methods, MRI, we have an amazing amount of experimental animal work, and the visual system is one of the most used uh, and, and most explored system. So after the retina, it goes into the first stages, color analysis, and the brain turns out to be extremely well organized. And it is a, a very careful map of what happens on the camera in the eye. We worked so quite some years already. Marcus van Olmzik did some very nice work in my group on multi-orientation analysis and multi-skill analysis. Here you see the differential operators that the brain is using, Gaussian derivatives. It takes at least to the fourth order derivatives, so we can do the whole spectrum of differential geometry, find invariant features and so on. But it also does multi-orientation analysis. So if you show a line, then it turns out that we have lots of cells looking at different orientations, and more surprisingly, these cells are extremely well organized in the brain. We have millions of these what's called cortical columns, and a column is a computer for one visual pixel. So every color is a different orientation, and the scale is going from uh, very big in the beginning, uh, in the center to the end. So this is the multi-orientation analysis, a, a few hundred thousand filters, but look at one pixel in the outside world. So we have quite a big computer for one, one pixel. If you look at all these orientation columns, and here we have the brain, this is with, with voltage-sensitive dyes. You can put a pasta on the brain, and if it is an action potential, you see some light flash. It turns out that all these uh, columns are also interconnected, so they talk to each other. If they say, hey, I'm vertical, the neighbor says, I'm vertical too, and I'm vertical too, so they all tell me I'm vertical, so that's a contextual input, and that means I, I really must be then vertical because there's this voting system, and that, uh, that works pretty well. So we model all this, 
And we do that, come on, by making an extra space. And this is why we need Mathematica. We have now filters that rotate, so we get these convolutions. And we get a new space x, y, phi, x, y orientation. And of course, what filters are the, the right one to make this space? Because we want one thing, that is we go back again. So in Fourier transform, we can go to the spatial frequencies, but you can only go back if you use cosines and sines. If you take triangles or any other function, there is no invertibility, no inverse transform. Well, for this one, we found exactly what is the inverse transform. So we found a whole new wavelet family. And if you have now this orientation transform, filtering of crossing things, etc., is now split to different levels. You can take cigar filters or whatsoever. And it means that uh, for the first time, if you have crossings, and of course in blood vessels we have lots of crossings and bifurcations, and we can now easily clean them up and analyze them. So this is the first thing. And how does it work? Well, we do this in the Fourier domain. We actually have the whole polar Fourier space here, and we actually just take a sector, a piece of a pie. So we call that a, uh, uh, a cake kernel. And if you take these cake kernels, we have them all here, you take the Fourier transform, and here we get the, uh, uh, the Fourier transform. And this very much could be the filter that the brain is using. So we're not talking to, to groups very precisely measured that, actually. People used to take Gabor kernels. And here we have Gabor kernels. But if you take the Fourier transform of that, you see you only get a small band, so you need multiple bands. And we already see here that if you take the classical Fourier, or the classical uh, Gabor filter, People normally take six scales or so, but now we can take one scale, so we are already six times faster. If you design all these kernels, you have to make uh, some uh, uh, user interfaces, and we, uh, we nicely built all these, uh, come on. We, uh, we use Mathematica, and it's underlined here for the design of algorithms, as we all know. It should come up with now a nice GUI. Yeah, and you see here that we, uh, uh, we use uh, splines. We can change the uh, order of these splines. We can uh, uh, calculate exactly how is the uh, uh, K-kernel uh, uh, functioning, so you can change the steepness and, and all these things if you make it really steep and you, you update. So the interactivity for our students to, to design all these, all these kernels is, is pretty nice. You see that they nicely add up to one. So the big thing is, can you also do this in 3D? And Michiel Janssen will talk in a minute about this in, the, in, in 3D. Um, we have a... Uh, um, actually, this was not copied to this computer. I, I, I think there was, a, there was a CDF, and you, you can nicely see if you change the orientation plane, you see different orientations of your vessels. You should then uh, believe that. And I think here this, this CDF is also not loaded. In. Yes, it does. So if we now track, uh, track these vessels, we can say, well, we uh, initialize and we can uh, uh, actually track a vessel, so you can uh, put the point in there, we uh, click to give it a certain direction, and then we uh, track the specific vessel, and you see fully automatically we have this kernel, this wavelet, stepping through the vessel, so each time we, we, we calculate step by step this direction. And this should be done for these hundreds of vessels, we want to do it within eight milliseconds on these 20 megapixel images and then 24 million times. So it, it needs to be speeded up and that's why we are talking, I'll come to that in a minute, to have everything also on a, a GPU-based uh, implementation. So this is the, uh, um, the overview of the project. We have 17 projects, all in Mathematica, running analysis of the uh, vessel pattern, but also deposits of blood and calcifications and so on. We have vascular modeling. This is the whole team. Uh, if we have all these measures, we have to put them together in pattern recognition and machine learning algorithms. So we do support vector machines and we have a lot of uh, yeah, combining what is the best classifier. 
Van Huang, my PhD student, who's doing the pattern recognition part. He, he's sitting over there. So it's a quite a big uh, team effort, uh, all using Mathematica. I now have the problem on how to put this into a huge program with a user-friendly GUI, user interface. And we have also uh, a, a 3D implementation in which we can track vessels for uh, in 3D. And around the eye, we have also a lot of vessels. So we're now with MRI groups in Detroit and in Eindhoven and Utrecht making new types of images, the feeding blood vessels from to the eye, we can also see, and they have to be, uh, 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 and I want to invite uh, Michiel Janssen to talk a little bit about how to design these uh, uh, cake wavelets. You want to do it yourself, or yeah. should I move? Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank Michiel you. This is one of my PhD students, and I think it's good to have the floor. Yeah, so this is uh, a project that I've been doing as a master thesis. And the project was to analyze these 3D vessels in 3D uh, MRI data and to use these orientation scores to, uh, to be able to do that. And the first thing that we need to do in these 3D orientation scores is to create these uh, orientation scores. And for that, we need uh, wavelets to do this. And Bart just talked about uh, these cake wavelets where we divide the 2D Fourier space in equally sized cake pieces. And so now we want to do something similar in uh, 3D. And here you see how we can use Mathematica to sample the, yeah, this three-dimensional Fourier space. This left uh, is a platonic solid that you can easily access in Mathematica. When we need more points, we can perform tessellations, and this is all functionality that you uh, immediately have in uh, Mathematica. And this is one of those, uh, cake okay, we have to be really quick. <laughs> and this is one of the cake pieces that you, uh, Create. So then I will skip this next part and just go from uh, what happens if we use these cake pieces to create our uh, wavelets. <coughs> this is not initialized. Did you run the initialization? Uh, you skip the whole bit, just initialize again. Oh, how do you run it? Okay. There's a bracket here. Right. Yeah, maybe just uh, much now. Yeah. Okay. Would you do it? Okay. No, it's okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's not an issue. It, the I think the packages are not installed. Is that possible? Like, it is on a new, then given time, uh, we need to skip this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, the packages that I used in this presentation are not installed on this computer, so. I tried to use my own computer, but the Beamer was not uh, helpful. So, uh, actually, there is a test image here. And but this is also not uh, working, because you can't load the data. Okay. Then I think given time we should skip this and I will tell about it. Okay, shall I tell about it? Yeah, I can. Uh, you, you. But it's quite difficult without the visualizations to uh, sort of give an idea of what is really happening. Um, but the general idea of such an orientation score is, is to, um, so we have this data and we saw in the 2D case that we can construct uh, from, a, from an image, we can construct a whole set of images and for each of these images you detect a structure in a certain uh, orientation. And we can do this also in 3D where we create from a data set for each orientation a separate three-dimensional data set. And um, yeah, this, this set of uh, orient data sets for each orientation is what we call an orientation score, and we could use that to, uh, to analyze these, uh, these vessels in uh, magnetic resonance and geography uh, data, but we cannot show it now. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's very much a pity because it is the most beautiful part of the talk. And let me tell you what is happening. If you take a kind of a cigar in 3D, you want to have a nice filter, you take the Fourier transform, and you get a hamburger. And that's not what you want to detect. You need a hot dog, you need a, a, uh, a blood vessel. 
So you take a hot dog and you take the Fourier transform and then you get a disk in Fourier space. So we could very nicely sample all these disks in Fourier space so it fills the whole space. And then we have the beautiful invertible detector in which we can detect nicely having tubes. And it turns out to be the optimal detector for detecting tubes. And these disks are quite nice because they are in the complex domain and in the real plane you have the disk itself and in the, uh, the complex plane <coughs> you have an asymmetrical kernel and that's a plus and minus kernel so actually two disks a minus one and a plus disk so they act as a differential operator so we can have a very high contrast uh, detector and we can then nicely see uh, in all these different orientations in 3d what is the optimal tube detector right there and no matter how noisy it is no matter how low contrast no matter how dim no matter how broken because we have these contextual operators that we use from from this brain connection it's much more robust than the current detectors that we have uh, now. So it is, it is actually quite, quite nice. And what we uh, do is uh, actually uh, design this, actually, mathematics par excellence suitable for the design of these things. So we couldn't show these things, but my students, they really play with mathematica, with mathematics to go to the Fourier transform, visualize the things like we all do, and it is very, very helpful. So we do now image processing algorithms. We say by mimicking the brain, but it's actually inspired by the brain. And then we see what is the beautiful mathematics behind it. It may very well be that the, that the brain is doing just this beautiful mathematics, not just some heuristic uh, things. And it turns out that we have now worked for years on multi-scale, and now we discover multi-orientation. But the brain has, severance, has severance, uh, uh, several processing pipelines there is also a pipeline for multi-velocity and a pipeline for multi-disparity, for depth, and a, a pipeline for multi-spatial frequency and for multi-color. And we realize now that actually the brain is making a huge dimensional space. So not XY scale, XY orientation, but also XY velocity. And if you see that space, it is enormous. You get hundreds of millions of filters, and that's exactly what we see. We see a quarter of the brain having all these filters, huge filter banks. So we uh, really nicely looked at the common factor about all these multi-scale wavelet families. What is it? And then Lie group theory turns out to beautiful mathematics underlying all this. And Mathematica is par excellence suitable for doing this. So one of my coworkers, Remco Duits, applied for a grant, and he got an ARC grant. And he just started April. We got a grant from 1.3 million euros to do the analysis with the multi-anything approach. So it's a completely different approach to computer vision. You do not reduce the things, so we do not dimension reduction and data compression. No, we do data explosion. We make extra dimensions, so we do just the opposite. So we are now building uh, this uh, into the first application. It will be a retina check cockpit. We have both in China and in the Netherlands, we are building now a uh, yeah, pretty powerful machine where we can do the uh, analysis. We are now acquiring uh, uh, data in the um, diabetes department in Shenyang, where we are located. They do 300 diabetes patients every day. Uh, we have cameras there, laser scanning cameras and normal cameras, where we acquire the data, and they go into our system. We have still the problem of how to scale up, and this afternoon I hope to have a good discussion with the Mathematica senior people how to go to these uh, big analysis. So far, we are now working on the, on the science of this. So. These are some of the uh, references, and I think given time, I uh, have to conclude here. We have some time for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bart. Are there any questions to Bart? Um, do you actually use CUDA, or do you see a, a need for these processors? Yes, we are very much looking into CUDA. I have two students who are actually quite bright in CUDA, but we have not yet. We found that CUDA is still in the early stage in Mathematica. We, we, we got stuck. It, it's not working really fluently yet. So we, we, we may have a closer interaction to Mathematica people to, to solve these starting up uh, problems. So, so your impression is that they've started working with it, but they have not well, pushed it? it or? Let, let's put it this way. There's a young branch of, on, on the tree. 
and it is, it is not mature yet. So we, we still run into all kinds of children diseases. But we have quite a big uh, machine uh, uh, working. We just got uh, eight uh, GPUs. We got actually quite nice funding for this project. So we have the, the latest uh, GTX 780, uh, four of them, both in China and in Eindhoven. So the, the hardware is relatively easy, and we have it. And there are some nice uh, examples, and I have students who can program in, uh, in CUDA and OpenGL. But uh, yeah, the concept is just beautiful. Mathematica takes care of all the uh, uh, memory management and, and uh, uh, freeing uh, memory. But this is the stage we're in. We don't have it yet. Yeah, I'm curious about the hardware required. I see that you partner with a Dutch producer or manufacturer of eye scanners. Yes. Uh, can you foresee any anything in the near future for which this would be apl uh, applicable to be done only with, say, uh, a very good smartphone, a scanning at your retina or anything like that, or you really need a kind of complex hardware? Uh, this is a. Actually, many people have devised an uh, a, a iPhone camera, and it turns out that it is not the quality that you can have with this. Uh, the optics is the most limiting factor. Uh, these cameras, we have tested two of them. Uh, they do not have the, the fine optics. The lens is already a bad thing. It is uh, cells, and you have to look through it. And then if you take not good optics, you just don't see the small blood vessels. You get a nice image, and it looks interesting. But if you do quantitative analysis, we find the curvature, branching angles, segment lengths, the exact width, and that comes in, in, in quite precise. We need to count very nicely uh, blood cloth and, and micro deposits and, and very narrowings and, and widenings. And it is, a doctor cannot see it, but a computer can see very tiny widenings. And that's exactly what we are after, and we can find them. And by combining all those, you have this, this yeah, diagnostic measure. And that camera was just not good enough. 